I just gave an AI full access to my Spotify, and honestly, I'm not sure if I'm prepared for the consequences. Oh wow, TV off into working out is hilarious. Because you don't do either. The happy tracks are aggressively happy in, uh, my therapist told me to try gratitude way. Then you call back to Drake to tuck you in with gentle, medium, sad affirmations. <laughs> tuck you in is crazy. That's a weird type of sting because it feels personal. But wait, does that mean the AI actually knows me enough to roast me? Or does it just seem like it? We're gonna find out together. I'll show you how I built this and what I learned from it. Break down the real science that tries to measure our feelings and then see how computers use this knowledge to redefine how AI understands us. And by the end of this video, we're gonna answer the biggest question. Does AI have real empathy or is it just pretending? Before we get into this, YouTube's telling me that 92% of people who watch this video aren't subscribed. If you like this content, subscribe. It helps a ton and you can always undo it later if you want. For a second, put yourself in my shoes. You're surfing the web, minding your own business, and suddenly you run into this. How bad is your streaming music? A website that uses AI to judge your music taste. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's give it a try. It runs like a typical AI chat. First, you give it access to your Spotify. It does a little analysis in the background. Ouch. Okay. And then it just keeps on laying down finishing comments. Agenda bad. You've got some original music, but most of it is mainstream garbage. <laughs> this is brutal. Now, this did more than just destroy my confidence. It inspired me. Why? Because I felt personally attacked by a computer, of all things. And that means, for better or for worse, I felt understood. And you know what else? It's not even actual AI. But what if it was? And what if that meant it would hit me on an even deeper level? Or rather, understand me even more? To answer those questions, I'm gonna build it myself, with AI for real. But I'm also raising the stakes. I'm gonna have it call me and out me to my face. So building this was actually pretty easy. Let me take you through it. Step one, I'm using make.com to get my 20 most recently played tracks. Now this will give me info like artists, names, and genres but I'm a man of science and I wanna get more thorough. Step two, I'm going back for every one of those tracks acoustic features, which includes metrics like danceability and something called valence, which is actually how happy a song is on a scale from zero to one. This is good info. Step three, we package all of this up and send it over to our AI agent, which I'm building in VoiceLow. Step four, before it gets to the agent, I'm taking all of that data and converting it into a high level summary. This is kind of like writing an executive report. I want my agent to focus on interpreting the numbers without needing to crunch them. AI agents just work best when they're built to do one thing really well. And finally, step five, the agent itself. Its primary mission is to look at my Spotify history and roast me with as much ruthlessness and specificity as the English language allows. Now here's what I'm curious about. You saw what it took to build this. Each step is just a tool of some kind. And we're after something pretty big here, understanding. So when the tools all start working together, can they create an experience that's greater than the sum of each part? Let's find out. Wow, tell me how you really feel. Glad you asked. The Earl sweatshirt to Funky Times pipeline is insane. What's with the Costco pack of mid-popularity funk fusion? Corey Wong, Sam Greenfield, Rettenbacher's Funkestra. Your vibe shifts like you're trying to appease three different Tinder bios at once. It's actually a pretty brutal thing to say. The happy tracks are aggressively happy in a My therapist told me to try gratitude way. Then you call back to Drake to tuck you in with gentle, medium, sad affirmations. <laughs> tuck you in is crazy. You press shuffle I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how it knew that I skipped leg day, but for real, the stabbing feeling that I'm getting in my heart would suggest that the experiment was a resounding success. I kind of feel brutally understood. And for the sake of science, I'm gonna propose that this is attributed to two things. The use of personal data, in this case, Spotify, and the way that AI interprets then communicates this data back to me. Put those together and you feel like a computer gets you. Now, that's a valuable framework, but I built this for me and I already understand me. If we can get AI to understand everyone, then this technology could have an even greater impact on maybe the world. And that's a big goal. So where do we start? Empathy is defined as the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. 
And this is the foundation for the definition of empathic AI, a model that can predict a person's internal state from the signals they emit. Let's break this down. My Roastmaster Bot 2000 does not have empathy. It worked because it analyzed my Spotify data, then spoke it back to me. The idea behind empathic AI takes us a step further. The data is in the way you express yourself. AI would then be analyzing how you're feeling, and that is at the very root of being understood. Now, this is a big deal because right now, AI is everywhere. Millions of people are literally using ChatGPT as a life coach, possibly including me. And that's fine, but as AI gets more advanced, it's easy to forget that the large language models that power the world's biggest chatbots are just predicting the next word in their own sentence. The data they use is just a string of words. And the truth is, there's not a ton of personal understanding happening there. But the adoption of AI keeps on accelerating, and the expectation from users to feel personally understood by everyday tech keeps on getting higher. So to a computer, having empathy would be like having a superpower. It's what helps you and I figure out the difference between these two words. We know that they mean very different things. It's even more powerful over voice, because that same word could mean 10 different things depending on how it's said. Does this sound too complicated to pull off? Well, we already did. The technology is already here. And when it's used, empathic AI is a game changer. For users, it creates a personal connection to the technology. For businesses, that's a huge competitive edge. So let's answer the question. How does it actually work? To show you, I'm gonna break down one of the coolest pieces of research I've read on the subject. Let's get into it. At its core, empathic AI is deeper than just language because communication transcends words, its tone, rhythm, and pure expression. These underlying mechanics of speech, essentially just vocal bursts, are so primal that babies learn how to use them before they even know how to speak. Knowing this, we figured out just how many different ways that we can communicate emotion. So, researchers used 16,000 participants across five countries, and half of them were given audio samples like this, and asked to label each sample with one of 48 different nuanced emotions. Then this group was tasked with recording their own audio samples, mimicking what they just heard. These samples were presented to the other half of the participants, and that group would label them with the emotion that they heard. This standardization of the data was super important because it helped to remove any bias associated with language, demographics, or even audio quality. Finally, using deep learning models on the data, they identified 21 distinct measurable emotions that depend only on the way something's said, transcending language and culture. This changed the game. Now, machine learning models can be trained on a ton of labeled vocal expression data, also that a computer can take in voice as audio input, match it to the data, and make a prediction in real time as to which one of these specific emotions was expressed. And by the way, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Researchers can and have applied similar techniques to understand expression across other modes, like facial cues. If I made a video just on the science of all of this, we could be here for days. So let's cut to the chase. This all sounds cool in theory, but what does it feel like to use it? I am so happy that this order went through. I've been looking for this product for like five minutes. And so the fact that you found it for me and put it in my cart, this is the best day of my life. I don't understand. What did you, what did you do in my order? I was so looking forward to that thing that I ordered. Doesn't make any sense. I just had the order in the cart. If you don't find my order right now, I swear. I honestly forgot that I made the order. So what are we even? What are we doing? What if that was the last time that I'm ever gonna see a product as good as that? I, I need your help. The user experience here was off the charts. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this inspiration that I just found, but I think it's gonna change the course of my life. This is what empathy looks like from an AI. It's really just a layer of real-time personal data transfer that sits in front of the agent's existing ability to process natural language. Like my Spotify roaster, the same two mechanics are still in play. Personalized user information and a way to interpret and communicate it back. In practice, this data is designed to be streamed to the AI agent in every conversational turn so that its next output is shaped and dependent on not just what the user says, but also the sentiment of the user themselves. 
this technology has a ton of practical applications. In education, online systems are using AI emotion recognition to adapt lesson pacing and better help connect students to core concepts. In preventative healthcare, AI agents can analyze personal diagnostic information, then use empathic AI to help patients navigate their own data. And even in public policy, sentiment analysis helps to design better community interventions. So when we look at everything together, our agent build, how AI communicates, and the science of human expression. Can we answer our first question? Does AI have real empathy? Does it have the ability to understand and share the feelings of another? By this definition, I'd say yes, but should it? Well, that's a philosophical question. And honestly, there's no single right answer. You could argue that AI learning empathy addresses a real human need, but you could also argue that maybe it's gone too far. The truth is, in giving AI empathy, we gain something even more important, a better understanding of ourselves. In the process, researchers have published thousands of studies. We learned way more about how to measure and map emotion, how we're connected by expression across cultures. This breakthrough doesn't just make for better AI. It's gained us to think differently about the science of understanding outside of even the tech world itself, in education, psychology, public policy, and even more. And this is the real payoff. Through technology, we're finding new ways to be seen, heard, and understood. So my last question is for you. How do you feel understood? And if you use that insight, I guarantee you that whatever you build next will, in some way, contribute to our collective understanding of each other. And if you want to keep exploring this with me, subscribe. Let's figure this out together.